I'm High Heel Knight. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my list of the top 10 painful movie going experiences I had in 2018. Before I get to the movie list, I'll explain how this is going to work. First of all, this is not a worst of movie list. This is a painful movie list. These are movies that I hated, that I just loathed seeing, that I felt wasted my time. And it could be even a good movie. Uh, I'll let you know right now, there's a movie that's very celebrated by the critics, but I absolutely hated it, and it's on his lips. Another thing you got to consider is that these are only movies that I saw in theaters. The way I enjoy a movie in the theater is different from when I enjoy it at home via streaming or just running to the Redbox for a quick rental. It takes a lot of time, money, and effort for me to get to the theater, so I want to be properly entertained. If not, then I'm really frustrated. So if you're wondering why certain movies aren't on the list, either I had the fortune to not see it, or I saw it, but I saw it at home. And finally, any movie that had a theatrical release is eligible. So things that had a limited release are eligible, or films that were just in the movie for a day or two, like a lot of anime films and small production films are in the theater for a day or two before they get sent to uh, home markets. Those are eligible too. If I saw it in the theater first, and it's a new movie as opposed to uh, a reshow like Casablanca or The Room, <laughs> then yes, it's eligible for consideration. So with that said, sit back, try to enjoy my list of painful movies of 2018. Number 10, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Some people would argue that we didn't need a Han Solo origin film. I would argue that we didn't need this specific origin film. The movie answers questions that never needed to be answered. Those answers were just as trivial as the questions themselves. And the handful of interesting ideas and seeds that the movie planted will probably never grow to fruition. But the main reason why the movie is on my list is because the film is just okay. It's not awful. It's not spectacular. It's just pretty good. And pretty good should never be how someone describes a Star Wars film. Say what you will about the prequel trilogy, the original trilogy, the modern trilogy, and all of the movies, cartoons, video games, and television specials. A Star Wars production should impact the audience in one direction or the other. Whether you're a casual fan that wouldn't know the difference between a Padawan and a Parsec, or you're a diehard fan that could play the Cantina song on an accordion backwards, a Star Wars film should never make you think, eh, that was okay. I don't know what the future holds for the franchise, but let this be the first, last, and only time a Star Wars production is just okay. Number nine. Mary Poppins Returns! Disney's collection of modern reboots and reimaginings of their classic properties has been a very mixed bag. Mary Poppins Returns is one of the most unnecessary sequels in cinema history, but at least the movie itself was pretty good overall. The movie is on the list because I didn't like the characterization of Mary Poppins. To be fair, after I saw the movie, I found out that Emily Blunt's portrayal of Miss Poppins is actually more in tune with the original source books than Julie Andrews' version. I respect that creative decision, but I still hated the results. I wouldn't want to spend five minutes with Blunt's version of Mary Poppins, and I definitely wouldn't let her take care of my children if I had any. To make matters worse, the music in the movie was incredibly forgettable. The songs are nice to listen to as you watch the film, but none of them are in the ballpark of the iconic soundtrack from the original. A movie musical with forgettable music? Yeah, it's going to make the list. Number eight, A Wrinkle in Time. There are times when a film is clearly swinging for the fences, but it completely strikes out. A Wrinkle in Time is that kind of movie. In the interest of fairness, there have been many critics that felt that the storybook the movie is based on is unfilmable. In the future, maybe there will be a production crew that figures out the formula to make a great movie out of this source material. For now, 
there was another reboot attempt from Disney that came up short. To be honest, I don't hate this movie. I started to like it after I learned more about the history of the book and its previous film adaptations. The reason why the movie is on the list is because of my first viewing. I left the theater confused and frustrated. I felt like I watched The Wizard of Oz, Star Trek, and The Gilmore Girls at the same time, but I wasn't in control of the remote. I appreciate the movie now, but this list is about my theatrical experiences. I had a bad initial theatrical experience, therefore, A Wrinkle of Time gets placed on the list. Number seven, Ralph Breaks the Internet. This movie was much better than the Emoji movie. However, it was not as good as its predecessor. The people behind this movie clearly didn't have a true idea for making a sequel. However, the corporate bigwigs at Disney certainly had an idea about mass marketing. This movie exists in order to promote various Disney brands because all of the best moments of the movie are jokes involving the Disney brands. What could be considered the A plot was practically resolved in the first act. Then that plot was painfully dragged into the second act. Then it was all but forgotten in the third act. The final straw was that the best supporting characters from the first movie were barely in the film. Come on! I've said it many times. I don't mind watching a 90-minute commercial if it's a good 90-minute commercial. Ralph Breaks the Internet was a very disappointing 90-minute commercial. Number six, Deadpool 2. Dishonorable mention, Once Upon a Deadpool. Technically, I've only seen Deadpool 2. I haven't seen the PG-13 re-release of the movie called Once Upon a Deadpool. However, I know that the differences between Deadpool 2 and Once Upon a Deadpool aren't that drastic. Therefore, I can lump them together. It's one thing when movie trailers don't reflect the actual content of the films because of reshoots and production difficulties. It's also understandable when trailers possess altered content in order to avoid spoilers. In the case of Deadpool 2, the trailers were blatantly false in order to play a cruel practical joke on the audience. Some folks liked the joke. I was infuriated by it. The primary reason why I was interested in seeing the movie at all turned out to be a giant bait and switch. Because of this, I will never see another Ryan Reynolds Deadpool movie again in theaters. I will not rent his Deadpool movies either. The only way I will watch a Ryan Reynolds Deadpool movie is if it's for free, as if I don't pay a single dime to view it. As far as I'm concerned, Deadpool is dead to me. Number five, The Nutcracker and the Four Realms. One of the movies on this list swung for the fences but kept striking out. The Nutcracker in the Foreign Realms fell on its face every time it left the dugout. The editing was awful. The classic music from the ballet was barely used. The world building for its fantasy rules was atrocious. The Nutcracker, the actual title character of the movie, was nearly forgettable. Worst of all, the ballet performance featuring Misty Copeland was visually confusing. It was a movie based on a ballet and it screwed up the ballet. You had one job, movie, one job. I mentioned that I can enjoy a 90 minute commercial. However, this movie isn't even a commercial. It's just Disney's attempt to sink its teeth into another iconic fantasy property while it's still in the public domain. The Nutcracker in the Four Realms exists in order to exist in Disney's vault. Let's hope the inevitable reboot the company unleashes 20 or 30 years from now will be better. Number four, The First Purge. This franchise started as a simple horror fantasy idea and now it has become too big for its britches. The newest movie, which was both a fourth other franchise as well as an origin film, should have focused on answering questions that numerous fans and critics have wondered since the very first production. How does the Purge actually work in that universe? How does a nation's annual ceremony of random self-extermination 
lead to economic and social prosperity. If we consider the concept of show, don't tell, then the previous movies were the tell. The first purge should have been the show. Instead, we got a movie that underwhelmed at both showing and telling. Whereas Solo, A Star Wars Story answered questions that didn't need to be answered, The First Purge does the old trick of answering a question with other questions. The movie also fails as a prequel because it utilized parts of lore that weren't revealed into the second film. Thanos of Avengers Infinity War also believed that the key to saving the universe was to cause a galactic genocide. As flawed as his thinking was, he still sold the idea to audiences. We didn't agree with his plan, but at least we felt tempted to take his side. Thanos accomplished in one movie that the Purge franchise has failed to do across four films. That does not put a smile on my face. Number three, The Favorite. I enjoy dark comedies. I enjoy political entry. I enjoy classical music. I enjoy stories that take an alternative look at history. I enjoy period pieces set during the era when men wore wigs, tights, and high heels. Now, I do not enjoy love triangle stories. I don't enjoy foul language stories. I don't enjoy lesbian stories. However, I might enjoy a foul language lesbian love triangle story. And if all else fails, I definitely enjoy full frontal nudity and sex scenes. The Favorite has all of those elements, and I was absolutely bored out of my mind. The movie's getting a ton of praise and award nominations, but it was the dullest cinematic experience that I had all year. I saw a lot of terrible movies in 2018 in theaters, on video, and via streaming. As much as I disliked those movies, at least I wasn't bored. The favorite had me checking my watch after every other scene. The movie featured a naked man gleefully being pelted by fruit thrown by his friends all for fun, and I was still bored. The movie made nudity, sex, lesbianism, cursing, and royal elegance boring. Boring! How? How is that possible? Number two, The Predator. This movie was plagued with production problems from top to bottom. The results of those problems were displayed in the movie from start to finish. The cinematography was a kaleidoscope of awfulness. The plot was a giant bag of trash. It took the lore of the franchise in a direction that made zero sense. It shoehorned in the political topic of global warming like Al Bundy trying to service a fat customer. All of the characters were as unlikable as much as they were illogical. And the movie ended with one of the worst examples of sequel baiting in recent history. The only reason why I had a shred of enjoyment from The Predator was the sight of Olivia Munn. Not her performance, not her character, I enjoyed looking at Olivia Munn. This movie ruined the Predator franchise. I hope it didn't take down Olivia Munn's career with it. Number one, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. I mentioned in the rules for this list that I experienced movies at the theater differently than I would at home. My best friend treated me to an advanced screening of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom for free, and I still wish I could have somehow gotten my money back. This movie was made as if it were a dumb cartoon. The franchise has had its highs and lows, but it was never treated like a dumb cartoon before. The movies were fun, intense, thrilling, scary, strange, and occasionally foolish, but they were never ever dumb. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is dumb. Start to finish dumb. If there was ever a movie that needed a page one rewrite, then this would be such a movie. The worst item of its numerous offenses 
was that the movie was created in order to make the next film. Many modern films place their sequel base at the end of their productions. The purpose of Fallen Kingdom's entire existence was a feature-length sequel bait. The next movie will be about dinosaurs running amok throughout the world. Fallen Kingdom was the bridge to that eventual future installment. If any element of logic, reasoning, character progression, scientific plausibility, and franchise lore had to be burned down to the ground in order to create that bridge, then so be it. There have been movies in 2018 that bored me, frustrated me, disappointed me, and angered me. However, I did not hate any of them. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was the only movie of the year that made me say, I hate this movie. I hated it so much that I almost didn't make a movie review video just so I wouldn't have to think about it again. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I hated it then, I hated it now, I'll probably hate it forever. I hate this movie. So you may have noticed that five of the movies on my list are Disney films. You might also know that Disney released 10 movies in theaters in 2018, which means I've actually complained about half of the films that Disney released that year. But rest assured, I am not a disgruntled former Disney team member. I like Disney. This video wasn't about bashing Disney. It's just that this is about movies that I went to see in theaters. I saw nine of the Disney movies in theaters and the one movie I didn't miss I saw on video and I loved it a lot. But still, I gotta go by what I saw in theaters and Disney let me down a lot of times this year. <laughs> so not Disney bashing, just hey, I hold a multi-billion dollar global, you know, film and entertainment production company at much higher standard than some, uh, you know, bunch of college students trying to just put a film together and get it somehow in the theater. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, I hope you enjoy watching my painful list of the 2018 films. Be sure to share whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike share and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hill Knight. Thank you very much for watching and remember, find inspiration everywhere.